What did you think of the exchange on the sideline after the pick six? When Brian Dayball, because look, everybody knows by now, every coach, every player, anyone who's on the sideline that may do anything that would be remotely interesting during the game knows anything you do can be seen, can be used, and can become a talking point in the aftermath of the game. So after the long pick six, they go over to the sideline. Yep. There's the exchange between Brian Dayball and Daniel Jones. And at the tail end of it, I assume we're going to get there. At the tail end of it, you've got you've got Dayball throwing the Microsoft Surface tablet, officially licensed product of the NFL, down in disgust and and walking away. What did you make of that? Yeah, well, I think it, it first started before the commercial break. Right here, right? He's going... He's going, you had Waller, right? That's what he said. And you had Waller open. So he's showing him that. And Troy kind of hit on it, too. He's like, he could have thrown it outside, I believe, um, to Wandell Robinson, who was on the outside of Paris Campbell, who the guy he threw to. Or, you know, in that look, it looked like, hey, the, the corners had come down on the underneath route, and they had the corner route by Waller, right? He was the inside of three. And in that look, you'd think, hey, Okay, they're kind of down. Boom, I'm going to hit it in the back of the end zone to him like that. It should be a touchdown. And that's what it should have been. It should have been. Daniel Jones was – I'm not going to defend him on that play. I'm not. You know, but I think it let – like, it, the, Dayball let his frustrations come through there. And, and, of course, he expects a lot of Daniel Jones. He pushes Daniel Jones. That's the kind of relationship he's got with him a little bit. And Daniel Jones is the type of guy that can, that can handle that. Uh, but but at the same time, I do think like Dayball, that was a, a hair harsh. I know it's a big moment and it's intense, but I also am like, hey, I know you want to yell at him and say he's open and all that. I don't know if you needed to throw the tablet at the guy who was under the most pressure again that I'd ever seen any quarterback up to that point ever under in my whole life. And that affects, you know, makes you see ghosts and it affects your internal clock like you hear all the time too. So I think that played into it, but certainly Daniel Jones made the wrong read and like you said, it was the dagger that ended that game. But that's a great point. How are you supposed to make the right read when you're already conditioned to think Get it out. Before you can Get do anything. Out. Right. Somebody's going to knock you on your ass. Right. So do you even see him? Do you just look at the first thing? Like, it's all, it's already flashes and blurs anyway. And it's only going to get worse on a night when you have no time to figure out right. what the hell is going on. So, yeah, he's open. Yeah, he's back there. But how was I supposed to see it, right? How was I supposed to see that he was open back there in that sliver of a moment when I'm expecting to get blasted because right. I got blasted pretty much every play of the night. And the, the, the thing with the, uh, the tablet, he didn't throw it at him. He kind of spun it and walked away. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, like, I, I understand it's an emotional game. And Dayball can be demonstrative and he can let his frustrations be shown. And I, I get it, right? He's as frustrated as anybody. But... At some point, you got to understand, this guy is running for his life, not even having a chance to run for his life. Before he can even get his shoes on, he's he's dead. And it's nonstop. And that's going to have an effect on a guy. I mean, this is. guy's going through one of the most difficult nights we've seen a quarterback experience right. rubbing his face in it. And I'm a Brian Dayball guy. We both are. And maybe there's something to it. I don't know. But it really did feel like rubbing a guy's face in it at a time when he's getting his body ripped apart by zombies, not just the usual slow zombies, supercharged, adrenaline-rich zombies that are coming at you from every angle. Like, it's incredible. And, and, he, and he survived the game, which is, which is the most amazing part of it. Right. And I, I'm, I thought there was a point where it's just get him out of there, get Tyrod Taylor in there, get anybody else in there. There's a point where you got to protect your investment in this guy. And it's almost like the Giants were oblivious to the fact that – the problem was the line, not the guy with the ball in his hands. And and you're right. The fans are all all dumping on Daniel Jones. And I was starting to say earlier, Ed Donatel's name was trending. And I'm thinking, why is Ed Donatel trending? He's trending because Giants fans are blaming him and his horrible Vikings defense for them being stuck with Daniel Jones now. Because if the Vikings don't have that Swiss cheese defense in the playoff game, 
and they beat the Giants, they don't pay Daniel Jones $40 million a year. And there may be a little something to that. Without that win, maybe he can't drive a hard bargain right. and get $40 million a year. I hear that. But the other reality yeah. is if they just could have worked out the long-term deal with Saquon Barkley, they would have done franchise tag for one year with Daniel Jones and avoided the long-term commitment, even though it's not all that long-term. We broke it down when the deal was done. I think it's like two It's two years, years basically. They, they can, can get out of it. Two years two. fully guaranteed. Right. But, but – Next year, they're stuck. Like, if this is just disaster. But, but again, again, it's not him. We know what he can do when he has time, like, you know, most other quarterbacks do, to make a decision about what to do with the ball. When he has an opportunity to actually run the play. When he has a chance to look for an open receiver. We know what he can do. You put any other quarterback in that situation last night, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, I guess Mahomes, I don't know. Could he have figured out a way to run around with his hair on fire long enough to get away from those guys? We saw what happened to him in Super Bowl 55 when the Buccaneers swarmed a bad offensive line. Now, he had a bad toe, too, but I don't know that even Mahomes could have run away from those guys last night. I, I think it would have been extremely difficult. I mean, you know, again, I know people are going to bag on Daniel Jones, but I think it's a little bit like you look at the Giants and you go – He's like problem 74 on the team. He's one of the best things they got going for them. You know, again, Matt Breida is a cast off. Like nobody wants him as a running back. And he led the team in receiving last night and rushing with his 1.1 yards per carry or 2.1 yard per carry average. Right. Other than Daniel Jones, who led the ru- who led the game in rushing by by 30, 36 more yards. Right. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's we got to all take the context of the situation. I know everybody wants to be cute on social media and get likes and whatever else. But, you know, Daniel Jones, it's it's a horrible support system around him right now. And Dayball and him, they have the type of relationship that I think, yeah, he can, you know, Dayball can lay into Daniel Jones a little bit. I think where, you know, and, and I'm sure he'll love him up a little today and, and let him know, damn, you know, you did some great things and you hung in there and we had a chance there only because of you. And he'll probably self-reflect too and go, I got to be a little careful with that stuff too because it becomes a, a talking point. And then people start to ask, is there, is there dysfunction there and all that? That's where you got to be careful if you're a head coach. But I think he's an emotional guy, and he's got that way about him with Daniel Jones where, yeah, he can let it fly and say some things to him that maybe you wouldn't see most coaches say to a quarterback. Uh, It was a tough situation last night. It really was. As bad as I ever saw, like I said. And, and, And it was a miracle, like I said, too. And I think Troy said this at one point. It's 14 to 3, and it just feels like, like the Seahawks are dominating and killing the game here. Like they're dominating. Like it should have been 28 to 3. And there they were on the doorstep, and we're going, are they going to make this 14 to 10 the way they're playing right here? And of course, then the, you know, the pick six happened, and the freak, the beast, the Tasmanian devil, as they might call him one day, Dev, Devin Witherspoon. Damn, is he unbelievable. He's like, he's fun to watch. He's one of my man crushes in the NFL. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.